Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You know, today is Good Friday, is that not? Good Friday is different from all other Fridays. What makes it good? Well, it is because of the gospel. It's because that was the day the gospel was actually activated. Amen. Christ died for our sins. He said it is finished. It finished everything. He fulfilled the law of Moses. He dealt with it. He removed it. He put it aside. So the law, from the moment Jesus died, the law ceased to be the means unto righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. People were trying to keep that law. But Jesus came. He fulfilled it. And he put it aside. He put it aside. Hallelujah. So everything that is written in that law that they demand from us, the devil was demanding from man, you must do this, you must not do this. If you do this, you are cursed. If you do that, you are cursed. All those things, Jesus fulfilled everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That all the cases, all the cases that supposed to come to us whenever or whenever we sin, Jesus took everything for us. Amen. Amen. He took our guilt upon himself. He took our sin upon himself. Like that Pascal lamb, the sacrificial lamb, he took it for us. For all we like sheep have gone astray. But God has laid on him the iniquity of everyone. Hallelujah. The Bible says he was delivered for our offenses, for our trespasses, for our sins. He was delivered, given up. He surrendered himself as the propitiation for our sins. Oh, what a good Savior. That's what made Friday good. Hallelujah. Amen. So for us, it's not a day of mourning anymore. It's not mourning. Hello. It's a day of joy. It's a day of what? It's a day of joy. Hallelujah. It's a day of joy. Our sins were washed away. And you know what? He did it once. Once. He didn't need to repeat it again and again. So, but you know the funny thing? Many people are still offering their own every day. Every morning, every night, they offer their own sacrifice. By begging God, oh God, every sin I know, the one I don't know, forgive me. You don't know. Look at it. Look at the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Or before we read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, let's read Luke, chapter 24. Let's start from Luke, chapter 24 tonight. Talking about the ministry of reconciliation. 
This is part three. Now, let's look at it. The book of Luke, chapter 24. Look at it from verse 46. This is after the resurrection of Jesus. This is what he said. He said to his apostles, he says, And Jesus said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ, the Messiah, should suffer, suffer their means to die, should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Read quickly. So it means his, his death was not an accident. He died according to the scripture. He died by the will of God for us. That's why he came. Hallelujah. Amen. What a beautiful Savior. Now verse 47. That's where I'm going. Pay attention. He says, that after his resurrection, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Did you hear that? What did he say? He said, we should do what? Proclaim. Do, do you know the meaning of that word proclaim? Announce. Announce it. Proclaim it. Preach it. What should you preach? Hellfire? No. Sinners are going to hell? No. God is angry with sinners? No. Is that what he said we should preach? No. What is it we should preach? Repentance. And what? Forgiveness of sin. What is repentance? I explained it yesterday. It's change of mind. Amen? Amen? Change of mind about what must I do to be saved? You thought you needed to pray every day, read Bible, pay tight, try and be a good person, try and be kind to people, don't do bad. Don't You know some people say, don't do bad too much. And then you pray that the day you die, you should die while you are doing something good. Oh. You see all those kind of things, effort. You, you change your mind about that and you look solely and only to Christ. That is repentance. Amen. You get it now? Yes. So the moment a person changes his mind about what he thinks he needs to do to be saved, his own self-effort, his moral effort, his religious effort, when he changes his mind from that mode and he looks completely to Jesus Christ, the one who was sacrificed for him, that is the person who has truly repented. And the moment the person repents, what happens? He receives forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. He didn't say, go and tell them to pray and beg God to forgive their sins. He does not what he said. Is that what he said? Now we should tell people to beg God to forgive their sins or they should pray and say, God, forgive my sin. No. He said, go and announce to them that there is forgiveness of sin. It's available. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So everyone who repents, that means who believes in him, who turns his heart to him, that person receives forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Amen. See, this is what is in the scripture. Look at the book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 43. Verse 43. Verse for, but, but before we read verse 43, let's quickly read verse, um, you know, verse uh, 39 and uh, verse 40. It says, And we were, we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. That's what we celebrate on Good Friday. But God raised him on the third day. And made him to appear. Now, go to verse 43. He says, To him, uh, to him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who, who, are, believes. who, are, believes. who believes in him shall receive will likely receive receives instantly see that english language is there it receives it's not saying you will receive the instant is like momo it's like momo immediately you quicken did you make a quicken hmm. amen. Amen. amen it's instant like that you understand yes. that's it the moment you believe Forgiveness of sin make back calm inside your heart. Yeah. It's yours. It's not. You are not waiting. That okay. Uh, Twenty-four hours it will come. No, back calm. You have it. <laughs> it's yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everyone who believes in Him receives. Not will receive. Receives instantly, immediately. Receives forgiveness of sins through His name. What a beautiful savior. Amen. Amen. God is not waiting. Listen, pay attention here. Look here. God is not waiting for you or any sinner, no matter how the magnitude of their sin, to weep and cry and say, God, forgive me. I'm not it again. Oh, no. It's true. You should have some remorse for your sins. Hello? Ah. Of course, no sinner, well, after you've seen how much God loves you, 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 you just you take it for granted. No. But God does not require the tears, the cry, the weeping. No. What he requires of you is just believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No amount of crying will put money in your, uh, make a account inside your mumu. If you like, write it tomorrow in front of the mumu merchant. All you need is a coat. Once you get the, the momo code, eh? what do they call that? A token. You give them, they say, okay, they check everything, then you get pang pang in your momo. The money be yours. Take, they go. You understand? God does not need your tears, He does not need those things. So stop begging God every day to forgive your sins. Stop begging Him. Stop begging Him. Just what? Receive. Receive. Believe that Jesus has paid for your sin once and forever. All you need to do now is what? Receive. It's yours. Amen. 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 Acts of the Apostle chapter 13. Acts of the Apostle chapter 13. That same book of Acts chapter 13. Look at verse 38 and 39. 
Look at it again. See, he said, let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man, Jesus Christ, forgiveness of sins is what? Proclaim. The word proclaim means what? Announced. And is announced. Hallelujah. Amen. Forgiveness of sin is what? Announced. We are announcing it. We are proclaiming it to you. Amen. Oh, what a Lord. He's announced. Wow. It's an announcement. You hear it? You believe it? It's yours. Hallelujah. Look at verse 39. I love verse 39. And by him, everyone who believes, everyone who are, that's what you need to do. Believe. Everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. The law of Moses will not free you, but the grace of Jesus Christ frees you instantly. Oh, what a beautiful Savior. That's what we have in Christ. Amen. So, it's, look look at that same book of Acts. I'll show you many. Chapter 26. Let me show you. Chapter 26. Chapter 26. There's no place where he says you should beg God to forgive you. No. No, it's not like prayer of forgiveness of sin. No. No. He said believe. Believe. Look at chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Look at what he says in verse 18. This is Jesus Christ speaking to Paul on the day of da- on the day of Damascus. I mean, on the road to Damascus. Jesus gave him this assignment. He said to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Why? For what purpose? That they may what? That they may what? Pray. Pray to receive. Beg God to receive. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith. By what? Is it by prayer? Sanctified by faith. Is it by tithe and offering? No. By church attendance? No. Church membership? No. Moral excellence? No. no. By faith. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, some people they say they are not sure what will happen to them uh, after death. They are not sure where they are going. They are not absolutely sure of where they are going. They, they are still they are praying struggling trying and hoping that on judgment day they will receive mercy that on judgment day God will just have mercy he will not, he will not remember their sins he will just be so kind that their, their, their good works will be more than their, sin, their sins then God will say mm, okay okay your sin, 30%. Mm-hmm. Your, your good works, 70%. Huh, you try. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, enter heaven. That's how some people, but even so, they are not even sure. <laughs> they are not sure. But one thing I know is this a plate of two cups of rice that you cook, two cups of rice that you cook, white, fine rice. Eh? I'm sure 
If you want to count how many spoons of rice you will take from it, it will be more than 20. Is that also? Hello? From two cups of rice, you take more than 20 spoons. Is that also? Tablespoons. Huh? But we just put only one. One afoji. One. Just one spoon of afoji. One spoon of excreta. We will just add to it. Mix it with it. Is it too many? I think we should be able to eat it. Won't we eat it? Or you will not eat it? Or is it not just one spoon? Or is it not too much now? Or is it... Ah, we are going to take about 50 spoons. So we will now put only one spoon of our body. It's quite something. Yes. Oh, that's... <laughs> see, see, one little sin is enough to destroy everything. If your faith is in your own righteousness, one little sin under the law can sue all your righteousness. But if your faith is in Christ, no matter how big your sins is, the grace of God covers everything. Amen. Hmm. The, the cafe. The Listen, you can be hundred percent sure. That's why it's called Good Friday. Because Christ did it perfectly. You can be sure. Tell your neighbor you can be sure of where you are going, of what will happen to you after you die. No doubt about it. The word of God is true. Amen. You can be sure, hundred percent sure. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. I believe this book. The word of God. Look at John chapter 3. This is what you should tell people as you preach the message of reconciliation. That their sins are forgiven. God is not angry with them. He's not even asking them to come and confess. He just wants them to acknowledge their sin and then far above all, acknowledge the fact that Jesus paid the price. John 3. John 3. You know, this is a very popular scripture. John chapter 3. You know, we read from the very popular verse, verse 16. Listen, listen. Pay attention. Okay, don't read your Bible. Listen to me. Take your eyes off your Bible. Look at me. Let me read it. Just watch me. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Christ did not come to condemn you. They brought a woman caught red handed in adultery. The law of Moses already condemned her. But in the end, Jesus asked her, Woman, where are your accusers? Say they are gone. Say, so no, none of them condemn you. Say no. Say neither do I condemn you. Go and say no more. Hallelujah. Oh, they say, oh, Zaki, Zaki, four one nine, Zaki. 
Ah, Zacchaeus is a bad guy. Oh, we know him. You know what Jesus said, Zaki, now me are you today. Amen. He did not condemn him. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, look at your Bible now. I want to read a very important verse, verse 18. Look at that verse 18. I want us to please read together. So do so that if you are see, this thing is real. You can be sure. See, there are people who are going to church every Sunday, pay tight, do everything. They are trying to live a holy life. Yet they are not sure. They still believe that if they make one small mistake like this, yeah, it's finished. <laughs> no, no. It's not by your works. Verse 18. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. Is that what is there? <laughs> Whoever believes in him is, 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 <laughs> is, is a settled thing, is not condemned, is not condemned, is settled. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is what? Condemned. Condemned. Already. Already. His case is settled. You understand? The person who believes is what? Not condemned. This case is settled. The one that does not believe is condemned already. And why is he condemned? Look at why. Because he committed sin. Because his sin was too much. Because his sin was special. His sin was too heavy. Why? Why is he condemned? Because he has not what? He has not what? He has not what? He has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. In the name. I've told you what the name of the Son of God means. Is death. Is burial and is what resurrection for our sins. Amen. Amen. Do you see now that you can be sure? Do you know you can be sure? Yes. Do you believe in him? Yes. Hello? Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Or you are still trying by your own moral effort, you are trying not to sin. You are trying and say, let me just try. If I can just try like 50% of, let me just try, you know, try. Let me just try. You are still trying. Stop trying. Stop trying. Tell your neighbor, stop trying. Stop trying. God calls you to rest. How do you rest? How do you enter rest? By believing. The Bible says, we who have believed have entered into that rest. You are at rest. Concerning your eternity, your eternal destiny, there is peace, there is rest. You are, you sh- you are sure where you are going. Hallelujah. On the first Good Friday, do you remember the thief on the cross? That guy, a bad guy. Yet, without going to church, without clapping, without praying, without doing all night, without paying time, without doing anything righteous, Jesus looked at him and said, Verily, verily, I say to you. <laughs> verily. You know, when Jesus started a statement with verily, you know the meaning? You mean? be too sure. Too sure. 
too sure. Nap it, palm it. Uh, how do they say it? Uh, you nap it, you. Uh, uh, di- uh, too direct. Uh, too, too sure, too straight. <laughs> Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. That's the person who broke all the law. <laughs> What good thing did he do? Nothing. So this is the good news we are to tell people. That everyone who believes in Christ receives forgiveness of sins. They have peace with God. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1. 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 He says, therefore, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Aha. Uh-huh. Good. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. He says, therefore, therefore. You see, when you start a statement with therefore, it means something has been said ahead. Is that not so? Amen. You, you understand English? Uh, good. That's why we went to school. So that we know that when you you don't start your letter with therefore. Do you start your letter with therefore? No, something has been said. So for us to know what happened before he said therefore, we have to go to the previous chapter and read the last two verses. Hello? Okay. Look at it. Look, or let's just read even the last verse. Who was delivered? That is Jesus Christ, our Lord, was delivered up. For our trespasses, he was sacrificed for our trespasses and raised for our what justification. Amen. Amen. So, because Christ had been delivered, given up, sacrificed for our sins, for our iniquities, for our trespasses, our transgressions, and was raised on the third day for our justification, therefore, therefore, as a result. You get it now? Therefore, since we have been justified, because that's why he died and rose again, we have been justified by what? By seed, tight, prayer, church attendance. How were we justified? By what? By what? By faith. So, what is the result? We have. We what? Are we going to have? No. We have. We have. Right now, we have what? Peace with God. That means we are reconciled with God. No more war. There's no hunger. We have peace. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can be sure that your sins are forgiven once and forever. Hello. I don't wake up and start thinking, oh, or when I want to sleep, I say, God, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bless the bed. I want to. Oh, yeah, you remember that poem in those days? Yeah. In case I die before I wake, uh, I bless my soul to keep or something like that. No, I don't think about that and begin to worry and say, hmm, hmm, we sinned. Oh, did I commit any sin today? I'm not looking for sin. No, I don't worry about that. I know that even if, if, if it happens that somehow, maybe in my conversation with people, I have done something wrong, I know 
that God is not taking account of sin against me. There's no book. There's no book in heaven that where God is writing and saying, okay, which, what's today's date? 15, April 15, 2022, at 5 o'clock. This is what you did. This is what you did. And Jeremiah put it on record. No, there's nothing like that. My sins are forgiven forever. Amen. Hello. Amen. You know, some people tell you that on Judgment Day, God will bring one video and start showing you video. He will show you video. Hey, from the time you were born, he will show you video and they will be reading the book like this. Uh, not for you. Do you hear what I said? Yes. It's not for you. That's for the sinners. Yes. That's for those who rejected Christ. Amen. Those who do not believe. They, their own books will be open. But yours, your book has been nailed to the cross of Jesus. Amen. It has been nailed to his cross. Amen. Your sin has been nailed to the cross. Amen. It's gone with him. He carried it away forever. Amen. So there is no book in heaven where your sins are being recorded. Amen. There is no book. None, not for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. This is why it's called Good Friday. Because there's good news. Amen. Let's close it with this one, then we'll go. Look at First John chapter 5. See, this is, some people say, I don't know what to tell people when I go to preach. This is what you tell them, what I'm telling you. This is what you tell them. Just tell them this one. Stop looking at their trousers. Stop looking at their painted lips and mouth. Stop looking at the beer they are drinking. Tell them about the love of God. Tell them about the forgiveness of sin. Tell them, they already know. They already know, they know. So you telling them again that, hey, you see this thing you are doing, they already know. They know. What they want to hear is solution. And you have the solution. And what is the solution? The gospel. Amen. Give them the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. God. This is our calling. First John, did I say first John? Chapter 5. Look at it from verse 11. Verse 11. But these are, see, the statements here, these statements, they are, Lord, give me the right word, the right vocabulary. They are sure, they are banker. That means setting. They are, there's not, it's not like maybe, there's no maybe, it's sure. Assurance. Look at it. Verse 11. And this is the testimony that God will give us. God may give us. God will give us. God is going to give us. This is the testimony that God, 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 God gave us. He gave. He gave. He did what? He did what? He gave. As far as God is concerned, stop asking God, God, give me forgiveness. God, give me eternal life. No, he gave. Oh, he gave long time. He gave. He gave. 
Amen. God gave us. He gave. He gave us eternal life. And he said, and this life is in the church. In Christ's life. He met all this church. Baptist church. RC. Eh, in the EP. Eh, Pentecost. Where is it? Where? Where? Your church sticker. In your tithe. In your offering. Your church attendance. Where is it? In the sun. Is it never in your Bible? Eh? If you have Bible, you have eternal life. Is that what it says? Well, eh? <laughs> is it in good behavior? Very good, excellent behavior, not doing bad things. You're just cool, being cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> Uh, where is it? He said, and this life is in his son. Now, do you see that? Now, look at verse 12. Whoever, whoever has the son will have, will have, will have, is going to have when he dies, and then God judge him, and then God begin to check whether it's balanced or not, they got to begin to weigh. No, he said, he, whoever has the son, once you have the son, you have eternal life. You have life. Whoever does not have the son, does not, it's not will not, does not, you don't have it. If you don't have the son, you don't have it. It's as simple as that. This is a statement of fact. Do you believe this? Yes. If you believe this, you have yes. peace of mind. Yes. You have peace of mind. Hello. Amen. Amen. The one who does not have the son, does he have life? Mm-hmm. Even if, hello. Yes. Even if he has a big Bible, a big Bible, you know that big Bible. Huh? He has Sunday Sunday dress, Sunday cloth, plenty. He has title, apostle, deacon, deaconess, elder, presbyter. He has scholar. He has everything. Hello? Does he have eternal life? It's only those who have the son that has eternal life. Now, look at verse 13 quickly. Now look at verse 13. Pay attention. He says, I write this thing. Now John the Apostle, he said, He, I write these things to you who come to church regularly. To you who pay tight regularly. To you who don't sin at all, who are perfect, you don't sin, you don't do bad things, eh? to you live morally sound life, eh? he said, I write this thing, to who? To you who what? To you who what? To you who? Oh, glory to God. Oh, what a beautiful scripture. I believe. I believe. I believe. believe. He says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. And I've told you the meaning of the name of the Son of God. Is it Yeshua Mashiach? Because some people say, call him Yeshua Mashiach. Is it Yeshua Mashiach? What's the name of the Son of God? He died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose on the third day. That's his name. Do you believe that? That's what it means to believe in the name of Jesus. He said, I write this thing so you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may think, that you may hope, eh? that you may think that you have eternal life. That you may hope that you will have eternal life. Is that what is there? No. That you may hope. Is that? What did he say? That you may. No. That you may. No. That you may. No. Know. That you may know. The Greek word is idol. 
E I D O. Hydo. Amen. Hydo is a Greek word for knowledge. And this knowledge means an assurance, an awareness, an assurance. When they say this is sure, that is what they use Hydo for. You are sure. Amen. Amen. You come to that awareness. You fully know. He said, so he said, I write these things to you, you, you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that is in the death of Jesus for your sins and his resurrection on the third day, you who believe, not you who are Christians by religion. My father is a Christian, my mother is a Christian, my father is a Harusi, me, I'm a Pentecost. I've been attending this, I was, I was confirmed, I was, uh, I was, I'm a communicant. All those nonsense stories you are talking religion. See, you no, know, it's not written for those people. It's written to those who what? Believe. In the name of the Son of God. That you may know. That is, be sure. Don't doubt it. You may know that you have eternal life. Amen. Uh, do you know you have eternal life? Yes. Or you want to sing like... We used to sing in those days, eternal, eternal life. Oh, eternal, eternal life. Oh, I want to live in eternal life. Oh, God, save my soul. I want to have eternal life. No. Including the pastor, everybody is singing that song. Is that, not, is that not too much ignorance? Oh, ignorance is a pastor. <laughs> We have eternal life. I say we have eternal life. I have eternal life. I have peace with God. I have been reconciled with God. I have been reconciled to God by the blood of Jesus. All my sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. There is no sin standing or that we ever stand between me and God. Oh, what a blessed life. Hey. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hello. Did you know that this is what I know that made me not to sin again? You know, this is what I know that broke the power of sin. Now that I even know that God loves me, that even if I sin, God will not reject me, I can't even sin. I don't know how to do it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But those are when they were threatening me with hell. If you sin, the Holy Spirit will leave you. That time, we fall and rise, we fall and rise, we fall and rise. But now, there's no more falling and rising. We know, we know that I hold not the rock, the rock holds me. I am not the one holding Jesus. Jesus is the one holding me. You know, in those days, they tell you, hold him well, oh. Hold Jesus well, oh. Hold on tight, oh. Hold Jesus tight, oh. My brother, you can't hold Jesus. He's the one holding you. Hallelujah. I said, God is happy. God, God is pleased with me. Amen. I said, God is pleased with me. God is happy with me. Do you know God is happy with me? How do I know that God is happy with me? Because I have done what pleased him. What he wants me to do. The work he wants me to do. I have done it. So I know he's happy with me. I know he's pleased with me. Listen, I don't come to church or serve God or give in church so that God can give me eternal life so I can qualify for heaven. No! No, 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 no. I give, I come to church, I pray, I worship, I do everything because of what I have. 
I have eternal life. It is that life that is working in me. It is that life that makes me read my Bible. It is that life that I'm responding to. That's why I don't sin. I don't take pleasure in sin. Even if, if I mistakenly do something wrong, I know that I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus, the Son of God. And he's a propitiation for my sin. Hallelujah. I know that God does not condemn me. Oh, what a blessed life. Amen. Amen. Do you have eternal life? Yes. Have you been reconciled to God? Yes. Or you ought to be reconciled. Yes. Now, now that you have been reconciled, the Bible says, as many of us as have been reconciled to God, we have been entrusted with what? The message of what? Reconciliation. We are being entrusted with it. We are being commissioned to go and tell others. Hello. We have been commissioned by God to go and tell others. Now, go back to that Second Corinthians chapter 5. Let's look at verse 18 again. It says, All this is from God. Who, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us he's not going to give us, he gave us already he gave us the ministry of reconciliation, so don't tell me you don't know what to do in the house of God you don't know your ministry, this is your ministry hello this is your ministry 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 now verse 19 says that is in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Amen. Now verse 20. Therefore, that is based on this fact that God has reconciled us and he has also commissioned us and trusted us with the message of recon reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are what? So as many of us have believed in Christ, we have received forgiveness of sin, we have been reconciled, we have peace with God. And you know it. Do you know it? Yes. Do you know you have it? Yes. You know what you have? You are Christ, you are ambassador for Christ. Amen. That's who you are. You are. So you are ambassadors. I am an ambassador for Christ. Do you know what they call ambassador? How many of you heard that word ambassador? You know, Ghana has ambassadors. So ambassadors are what? Representatives of a particular body, like organization or a nation. Amen? Uh -huh. Now, ambassador represents the government. He represents their interest. You understand? In the same way, the Bible says you and I who have received eternal life, who have received forgiveness of sin, who have been reconciled to God already through faith in Christ, he said, hey, we are not to just receive it and then be smiling at home. No. He said, we are given an assignment. We should see ourselves as what? Representatives of Christ among men. 
He said, we are ambassadors for Christ. Is that not a wonderful privilege? Amen. Amen. I'm an ambassador of Christ. Listen, this one is not a political appointment. And now they don't need to vote you or vote for you. You don't need to lobby around and say vote for me so that they vote for me. Vote for me. No. <laughs> the day you believe Christ, that day he made you his ambassador. So you too, you can write ambassador. Amb- you know? <laughs> ambassador. Ambassador. You know how you people write their name? You know, some people will be writing some titles that are not in Bible. JP. That JP, Jerusalem Pregame. That one no day by better write uh, ambassador. Amen. Amen. Ambassador Fred. Amen. Ambassador Divine. Amen. You understand? Yeah. Ambassador Prosper. Amen. You know, you are representatives of Christ. You are his ambassador. Amen. Amen. So you are his re- you are his representative. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Is that not beautiful? Amen. Is that not a beautiful thing? Amen. You know, some people they give themselves funny, funny names. I've been I've been hearing some funny names of some of these youths call themselves. I've heard Rolex. I've heard the Shorty. I've heard the uh, is it broken bottle? Uh, which one again? Capon. All those nonsense things that you are calling yourself. You are not Capone anymore. Stop. The more you call yourself Capone, you'll be acting like Capone. The more you act like all those stupid names you are. Because what you call yourself is what you behave. Why don't you call yourself this honorable title? Call yourself ambassador. Hallelujah. That's a better title. Don't you think so? Is that not honorable? Oh. And you know something? Wait. You know something? Ambassador for Christ, for the kingdom of God. That's the highest one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what you are. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am an ambassador. Amen. Be proud of that. Hallelujah. Amen. You understand? That's what you are. Don't be ashamed of Christ. Did they say ambassador of which country? Say of Zion. (laughs) The heavenly Jerusalem. Hey, the city, the city of the living God. That is, you are the ambassador of the city of the living God. You are the ambassador of Christ. You are the ambassador of Zion. Glory to God. The kingdom that is above every kingdom. The throne that is above every throne. You are representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, hallelujah. We are ambassadors for Christ. Christopher 
Amen. Now let's read that verse 20 finish. He said, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. God is making what? His appeal. Hey, did you did you take note of that? God is making his appeal. Did you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see the word used? Appeal. Do you know the meaning of appeal? Hey. Hello? Can somebody tell me? Appeal. When you say you appeal, it means what? You are begging. Is that not so? You are pleading. Can you imagine God Almighty is begging? Hey! God Almighty is begging sinners. Come home. He's begging those people. Hey, he's begging them. God is not bossing. Oh, God is not saying, if you don't repent, I'm going to hell. No! He's begging. He's pleading. Oh, He's begging you, begging sinners. God is begging, pleading with you, appealing to you. He's telling you, oh, come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Tenderly. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Amen. Amen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Softly and tenderly, with love, is calling, is pleading. Don't die in your sin. I have paid. Hello. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. He said he's pleading. God, so, listen. Christ is living in you now. He's doing his work of reconciliation through you now. So, through you and in you, listen, he's pleading with people to come home. So, when you open your mouth and say, you are going to hell fire. Are you speaking for Jesus? Is that how to represent Jesus? No. Jesus will not talk like that. You plead. You beg. You say, come on. God loves you. He loves you. Don't perish in your sin. You don't, you don't need to perish because somebody has died for you already. Why will you perish? So what do we say? He now says in the last part of verse 20, he said, we implore you. Do you know the meaning of implore? We beg you. We plead with you. We implore you on behalf of Christ. On behalf of Christ. Because we are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. Be reconciled to God. That's what we got. We are going out to tell people now. We are going out to plead with people to receive forgiveness. We are begging them. We are begging them. We are going to be- see if you need to cry, cry. Just help them. Do you know why I go to people's houses? These small, small boys that are that are not if I if I married at the age of twenty five, I would have gone older than them longer. But I'll go to the other one. Uh, Let's go. I will do like Mumu. And you'll be doing like Mumu like that. I'm representing Jesus. I'm pleading with them so that they can come home, be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what God wants you to do. Amen. 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 Go and tell them to come. That God loves them. He's not condemning them. He's not judging them. If only they will believe. They will be saved. Amen. They will receive that salvation. Amen. It's ready. They don't even need to beg. They just need to open their heart, Amen. believe, and they'll be saved. It's as simple as that. They don't need to do anything more than to believe. That's all. No religion. No. Mm-mm. It's just believe, and you'll be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have been given the ministry 
of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ. We who have received, we have tasted the grace of God. We have tasted it. It's mercy, it's love. We have tasted it. The goodness of our God, we have tasted it. Now God expects us to go and tell others. If we don't tell others, we are not doing well. We are not doing... I'll close with this story. It's a very popular story. In the land of Israel, there were seven years of famine. Seven years of famine. Terrible famine. That people... People were even eating one another's children, kidnapping one another, one another's children, and eating because of their sin. They said God was angry with them, but God, through His prophet, gave them victory over the enemy. The Lord Himself fought the battle alone it scared away the enemies now four lepers four lepers who have no fingers to even hold sword not to talk of fighting they couldn't fight they cannot claim that they fought the enemies because they didn't have fingers to hold the sword now they found all the treasures the spoil of battle God for the battle, they now came to take the spoil, and they were enjoying the spoil. They were enjoying the food, taking gold, taking everything, and enjoying it. And they were enjoying. Then, and now they were rejoicing, singing and happy. They ate. Ate, enjoyed, and suddenly one of them said, Today is a day of good news. Today is a day of good news. And we are keeping quiet. If we keep quiet until daybreak, uh, some punishment will come to us. So that same night, the Bible said they went to the city. They shouted on top on the top of their voices, and they announced, they proclaimed, the war is over, the siege is over. You don't need to hit your children again. There's plenty of food now. Come and take food. That's what they need to announce. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And by their announcement, Amen. the whole city Amen. was saved. Amen. Because people came out Amen. to also enjoy what they enjoyed. Amen. But if they kept quiet, Amen. oh, would it have been good? Amen. What will you call them? If they try to eat all those things alone, what will you call them? Eh? Selfish, wicked people. Why you all back on the person now? Hello. They did not even mind. You know, lepers were not allowed in town, but they didn't care. They went to announce. They went to announce. See. You, you may say you may say you are not educated. You may say you don't know Bible like Pastor. You don't need to know Bible. Remember, God used lepers to announce. All He wants is your voice. Just open your mouth. Tell them. Just tell them. Say it. Say it how you can say it. All these things you have been hearing since three days now. Say it how you can say it. The one you remember, just say it. John 3 16, just say it. Tell them God loves you. Your sins are forgiven. Just believe. That's all. And they will be saved. And they will rejoice. And they will thank you. Amen. Amen. Let us be like those lepers. 
Let us not just be selfish with this message we are hearing. Hello. Some of us, after we hear this message, what do we share in our status? This is the kind of thing you should share your status. Your status of the these are the things you should share. On your on your web, Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, this is what you should share. Share the good news. That is what you should do. Spend your money for God. Spend your data for God. And when you meet people, share the audio messages. Share to them. Give the link to them. And, and follow them up to know whether they really listen. Help them. Help them. Help them. Because you have been saved. God is looking up to you for the salvation of others. Don't be selfish. Let's be on our feet. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I say I am an ambassador for Christ. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. If you can say the words of Peter, if you can say the words of Paul, if you can say the words of Jesus, say, he died for you, for me. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. I will go and tell them. What about you? Will you? Yes. Will you? Yes. Will you? Yes. Will you? Yes. But first and foremost, be sure that you yourself, you are saved. Amen. Amen. If you are, are you saved? Have you received the goodness of Good Friday? Have you received the goodness of God? It's not, it's not some things you do or you don't do. Stop thinking of what do I do, what do I don't do. No. It's about one thing. Do you believe? Have you believed? That's all. If you are believed, it's not a feeling. It's not some feeling. It's not. A, it's not when you can pray one hour, two hours. You can speak in tongues one hour, two hours. No, that's not what we are talking. Salvation is simply by faith. All, all those other things are spiritual growth. It's growth. It's growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I will go and tell them. Will you? Yes. Will you? Yes. Will you allow Jesus to use your mouth? Yes. Will you allow Jesus to use your feet? Yes. The same way Satan used you before. You, ca- you waka with your leg. You waka to go and commit sin with your mouth. Cha cha cha. Gossip. Now. Carry your leg waka again for Jesus. Open your mouth again. Gossip for Jesus. Gossip for Jesus. I say gossip for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to lift up our hands and say, Lord, I yield myself to you. I accept this privilege. I accept this honor of being your ambassador. I accept it, Lord. I accept this honor. I accept this privilege. I accept this honor that I am your ambassador. I'm not ashamed to be your ambassador. I will tell people. I will plead with them in your behalf. I will plead with people. I will tell them that you love them. That you are not counting their sins against them. I will tell them that all they need to do is believe and receive. I will tell them, pray in the name of Jesus. Praise. I say, Lord, I receive this honor. I receive this honor. And Lord, I receive this grace to go and tell others. He said, go, tell them. 
Tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go. Go. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. You are witnesses unto me. He's in you. Like the woman by the well of Jacob. Go to the city and tell them to come and see Jesus. He loves them. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I will go. I will go. I will go. I will go. Hallelujah.